Hello. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Fine, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm on. All right. So um, I think we can start. Today we begin the topic that I mentioned on Monday. It is called uh, discrete probability distributions. Um, and, the, and this, like I said, this week's homework uh, is based on that. The, the ones that, that are due on Sunday, they are based on that uh, discrete probability distributions. Now we begin with the basic concept, which is um, things like random variable, uh, discrete random variables and so on and so forth. Now random variable simply means um, any variable that in which the values are determined by chance. Good example, um, I toss a dice, if a dice is tossed, this dice, it's, if it is tossed, I, either one can show up, one can show up, or three, or two, any of them can show up at random. So, that's one example. Example, how about this? Number of students, number of siblings of a BCCC students, or even a Morgan State University student, number of siblings that they can have, that they have already. You have no control over that because you meet in the class, you don't know how many siblings anybody can have. Your classmate might have two siblings or one, uh, one brother or two sisters, five, four, three. You have no control over that. How about this? The time a bus arrives at a bus stop, it can be five minutes late or five minutes earlier. 10 minutes late or 10 minutes earlier. So we don't have control over that. These are all random variables. Now, a discrete random variable, this one it has the, um, the values that we can count. They are countable. For example, the number of people who are jogging at Patterson Park, you can have one person jogging, two people jogging, uh, three people jogging. But you cannot have one, you can't say one and a half people are jogging. No, you can't say that. So these are countable. Another example, a, a hen, number of eggs that a hen lays in one day. Again, you can say one egg, two eggs, three eggs, you can never say one and a half eggs were laid by, you know. So there are variables like that by nature, by the nature you can count them and call them discrete random variables. Uh, for example, I, I, more example I mean to say, number of telephone calls that you receive after you have a TV commercial or maybe any kind of advertisement, one telephone call, two telephone calls, three calls, 20 calls. You cannot say one and a half calls or 20 and a half calls, no. So like I said, those variables by their nature, you can count them. So you call them discrete random variables. But for continuous random variables, you cannot count them. You can only measure them. Things like height, uh, weight, temperature, you only measure them. Now, today we are, we are, we are this week we are working on discrete probability distribution. Next week we'll start with continuous probability distributions. Now, the discrete probability distribution consists of the values that a random variable can have and their corresponding probabilities of those values. That's what we call a discrete probability distribution. Now, usually an example always illustrates uh, is more explanatory than the theories. At least the theories will give you about background information that you need to know uh, before example. So let me use a few examples to illustrate uh, the discrete probability distribution. So the first one we're going to do that is this question. It says, um, construct the 
probability distribution for rolling a single dice. Remember that this is simply means um, the values that the random variable can have and the corresponding probabilities of those values. So what we do is we have our, put them in the form of charts. Okay. I just like my chart to be in this form. So I put them in the form of a chart. Okay. We have outcome. So outcome, so this is for a, a single dice. So you can outcome. We use X to denote those outcomes. X and the probability of X. PX, we call it probability of X, we call it PX. So I'm gonna make it a little bit uh, bigger because what we're doing here, let me uh, move this to the next page. So I have enough room, okay. So what I'm trying to answer here is the, to construct the probability distribution for only a single dice. So this is the outcome and this is the probability of those outcome, you know. So we have one showing up, two showing up, three showing up, four showing up, five showing up, then six. And then you can, um, uh, for a dice, like I told you again, a dice has six sides. Yeah. So for any of these outcomes, the probability will be one out of six chances. Okay. I'm gonna let me center this so you can see it very clear. Okay. So for one showing up, the um the quiet probability will be uh, one out of six chances. For two showing up. Is also one over six because a dice has six sides. Okay. Now, for three showing up is one over six. For four showing up, one over six. And for five showing up, one over six. Okay, one over six. So all the outcome you have one out of six chances, see? And that's, that's the answer right there. The outcome and the corresponding probability of those outcomes. That is what we call discrete probability distribution. Questions? No. Okay, good. Now let's try uh, two more examples. First, the next one is this, it says, represent graphically the probability distribution for a sample space for tossing three coins, three coins. Remember for a coin, one coin is head and tail, very easy. But for three coins, is a little bit different. We, we, we need more room here. Now, let's say you, we use head and tail, okay? Head and tail. So for the first toss, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So for the first toss, we're gonna to have head and tail for the first toss. So we're gonna start from here. Uh, I'm gonna call this place the start. Okay. So first that we have first toss, we have um, head. Okay, and tail. Okay, that's the for the first toss. But it says to present graphically the probability distribution for the sample space for tossing three. Uh, coins, 
That's the first coin. So for the second coin, we have, for each of them, we have head and tail. Head, tail. And for this side, we also have head and tail. Head. Okay, tail. Because it's still present. Uh, so with this, we help us to get the graph we're looking for. Okay. And for the first third thoughts, I mean the third coin. Okay. And for the third coin. Third. Okay. So for each of these outcomes, we have head and tail. So we're gonna have um, head here, head, and then tail, tail. For this one, we're gonna have, for this T, we're gonna have head and tail, head. There. Now on this side, we do the same thing. We're going to have um, head here. Oh, excuse me. Um, mistake. Head. So I'm, I'm going to, this two diagram will help us to determine the outcomes. Okay. Then we can make our graph. There. So we have here, oh, it's too close. Head, then, and the tail. Tail. I'll make it button like the other ones. So now with this, we can have our outcomes uh, like before. So we got head, tail, or the top coin. Okay, head, tail, Okay, tail right here. Then we have the same here, head. Tail. Then head. Tail. Now, so let's look at the outcomes now. With, this, with those outcomes, uh, we can make our graph. Because as you know, uh, the question says to present graphically. But before you can draw the graph, you need to know the outcomes. For the first, it can be head showing up on the first coin, head showing up on the second coin, head showing up on the third coin. So it's going to be head, head, head. See? Or the head showing up on the first coin, head on the second coin, and tail on the third coin. So you head, head, tail. Can be head showing up on the first coin, tail on the second coin, and head on the third coin. You have head, tail, head. Or head on the first coin, tail on the second coin, and tail on the third coin. So you have Head, tail, tail. So you follow the same process for the for this part. Tell head, head. Tell head, head. Tell head, tell. Tell head, tell. And then tell, tell head. Tell, tell head. And it can be all, tell, all the three coins string tells. Tell, tell, tell. Okay. Tell, tell, tell. So how many outcomes we have? 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight outcomes. So eight outcomes. Um, eight possible outcomes. So with this, we can uh, represent uh, the graph. Because the question says, represent graphically the probability distribution for the, for the sample space for thousand three coins. So to let, let us make the graph. Uh, the way we can make the graph is we make our table um, of values, like you know. So let's make a table of values here. We have <coughs> insert. Um, excuse me, mistake. Okay. So from this we have. Number of you can use number of heads, um, or you can use number of tails. Either way, you get the same results. Okay. Let us say that uh, I want to make this, uh, you know, to have no space is too big. Okay. That's better now. You can say we have um, number of heads, and then add. So you have number of heads of heads x is a is a x then the probability of x which is our px okay number of heads and uh, then probability of that which is a px okay now no head that's zero head <clears throat> one head two heads and three heads. See? Now, remember, if you like, you can use number of tails. It will still give you the same uh, results. Number of tails, if you like, uh, to get the same results. Excuse me, uh, I wanna make this thing. Okay. All right. Let me make it centered. Okay. They have number of heads and then the probability of that. Now, if you look at this, no head. So if you look at our outcome, this is only place where you have no heads. Only one of them have no, no heads. And out of, that is out of eight outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So after that, only this, this one has no head. So we have one out of eight outcomes, no heads. Now, one head, one head is, we want to have only one head. This one here have one head, TTH, tell, tell head, tell, H, tell. So one, two. So this has one head, one head, you don't want to have one head. And this one here, one head. That HTT, because H present head, if you look, H represent head. So one head, one head, and one head. So three of them, three out of eight. Two heads. Okay, this one have two heads. Tell head, head. Head, tell head. Head, head, tell. So this, so this one, have exactly two heads, exactly two heads, exactly two heads. So three out of eight. Then three heads. Only one of them have three heads, this one here. Head, head, head. Three heads. Now, with this table, we can we can now have a graph. Okay, let me draw the graph so you can see. I'm gonna put um uh, probability of X, probability of X. Okay, where S represents the number of heads. Okay, I got number of heads, number of heads. Number, uh, you can use. Um, you can use tail if you like. So now we have one head. Okay, my mistake. Yeah. 
zero head, one head, two heads, three heads. And then we have, um, we can now make our chart. Okay. We go from here. Then this one here. Okay. We got um so number of heads, and I think I, I think I can make it bigger. I'll make it a little bit bigger. I love the better for us. 14. Okay, I'm gonna extend this. I extend this one. Okay, and uh, then good. Now here we have at uh, the add on the probability we have one over eight, two over eight, three over eight. Actually, this one I wrote three over eight by mistake. There's only one head here, so you gotta be one over eight, not three over eight. Three over eight, one over eight. Now we extend this have. One over eight, okay. And this one, two over eight, okay. Three over eight. Okay, and let's draw a graph. So for zero. Number of head, no, no head is one over eight. So I'm gonna uh, draw the line um, to one over eight. Usually it's a line graph, okay? One over eight is right here. Then next is one head is three over eight. So I'm gonna draw one head is three over eight. All right, the way to the third one. Two heads, maybe. Um, two heads, maybe three over eight. Three over eight. Then three heads, one over eight. So one over eight. So you're gonna be one over eight. That's a graph right here. Uh, questions? No. Now, some books might want you to make it to look like a histogram. In that case, you can just, uh, you know, cover it from here, close this space. Um, close this space, it become a histogram. And then, you know, close this one. I make it a history of mathematics. Some books want to ask you to do that. Um, it's the same thing, basically. Uh, yeah, the same thing. Now, so we have answered the question of uh, is that asked what to say represent graphically the probability distribution for the sample space for cosine three heads. Now, if it is um, uh, next one we're going to look at is the third question. It says says here. Okay, we'll go. Okay, let me, let me take you to the next page then. Okay, the third question says, um, okay, big. During the summer month, it's just like a little bit of uh, application problem. So during the summer month, the rental agency keep track of the number of chainsaws it rents each day during a period of 90 days. Now, the number of saws rented um, per day during that period is represented by the variable x, and here are the results. Uh, we had as no no saws rental, no um, chainsaw was rented. That's zero for forty five days. They did not rent uh, any chainsaw. Excuse me.
Then for one chainsaw rented, the party they rented only one of them. And for 15 days, they rented two of them. Say compute PX and for X. PS means the probability. And then construct the probability distribution and graph the data. So in that case, uh, we have them. Um, let us uh, figure this out. So for, let us add a column here to get to be able to get the probability. I think I can um, add a, a row and a column. This row will be for the total. Then we're going to add a column. Um, and use this to add one column there. Okay. Now, um, so with this, we can find our total. Then we'll be able to answer these questions because it says, um, so now we're gonna, we're gonna add 45 and this to get the total. Let me add them, add them down. Then we can add 45. Uh, plus 30 plus 15. So we have, um, I'm taking you to this more so we can add them. 45 plus 30 uh, plus 15, 90. For those 90 days, okay? There are 90 days, so I'll take you back. So we, we added them, we get 90 chainsaws. So the probability now becomes Px, x. So the probability that you rented no chainsaws, uh, solution, let's look at part A. Uh, solutions, okay. Okay, so project that they rented no, because it says compute PX for each X. Project that they rented no chainsaw as PO. I don't know this, this uh, I compute is always changing back, back and forth. Probability of no chainsaw was rented. Maybe how many how many days? It's forty five out of ninety, which is forty five by divided by ninety. That will give us the probability we are looking for. We have uh, to this most it was forty five over ninety. Uh, forty five divided by ninety. 0 0.50, 0 0.50. So add 0 0.50 right here. Um, 0 0.50. And also here, 0 0.50. Uh, this is the first one. Then someone was probably of one chainsaw was rented. Probably of one chainsaw was rented. Maybe see it is 30 out of 90. So you're going to 30 over 90. That gives us uh, from the um, Desmos 30 divided by 90. So we change this to 30. 0.33333. So uh, stop at the third decimal place so you can be able to graph it. Okay, 0.33. So uh, I'm gonna use 0.33, okay, so 0.33, I'm gonna add it here as well, so 0.33. Now, last one is probability of 15 chainsaws, sorry, for probability of getting the two chainsaws we are rented out, 15 is possibility here, PP. Uh, probability of two chainsaws, equals is a 15 out of 90, after, out of 90 days or half as he had. So it equals uh, to Desmos, 
we have it as uh, 15 or 90 days, 15. Okay, 15. Point one six six six. So we run it to two decimal place. Point one six. Sorry, point one seven. So we, we can be able to graph it. Point one seven. Um. Zero point one seven. Zero point one seven. Now we have all our outcomes. We're gonna put it right here as well. Zero point one seven. So that we can now graph the outcomes. Okay. But the question says, you have answer part A, compute PX. Now, it says, construct a probability distribution and graph this, this outcome and their corresponding probabilities is what make up the probability distribution. Now, let us graph it. We graph, we go this way. Let me hope this place is enough for it. Um, let's say that this is um, outcome. Outcome X and I call it number of days. Okay, if you, if you call it number of days, if you like, uh, number of days, I mean, sorry, num number of chainsaws, sorry, number of chainsaws, uh, chainsaws they rented. I think it's chainsaw, but right, yeah, chainsaws. So rented, then X so X on top of which we're gonna have one no chain saws. One chain saw. Two chain saws. I'll make it yeah. Now then the probabilities goes from 0.5, point to 0.5. So I'm gonna have the first one as, okay, 0 0.1, so. 0 0.2 is too close. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, this is our PX, okay? Uh, 0 0.5, PX outcomes and probability of those outcomes. Okay. Now we can insert our graph on it and so you can, so you can look at it. Outcome. Uh, to the best of my ability, I will draw it. <laughs> I'm not a good draw with this, but I'll you know try my best. So no chain saws, one chain saw and two chain saws, okay? No chain saws is uh, 0.5. So I'm gonna uh, pick it from there. Inside, uh, no chain saw was rented 0.5. So 50% of the time, then one chain saw is 0.33. This is 0.3 right here. Halfway is 0.355. So it's 0.3 should be around here. So we have we have 0.33. Okay, 0.3 first, then 0.33. Then two chain source is 0.17, 0 0.1. Here, 0 0.7 should be around this place. So uh 0.17. Yeah, that's the graph right there. This one is too tall. Um, it keeps it a little bit. Okay, now some books you can you might ask to uh, you know join and make it a histogram, which is, which we can do. Uh, okay, uh, this can be a histogram. Uh, 
Pick it up. Find trade tray. And then point one one seven. One seven should be right here. Over here. Okay. Right. This is gonna be the graph. Questions? No questions. Good. No questions. Very good. Good job. You are doing well. Excellent. Now, now let us look at two responsibility, two requirements before that we need to be that need to be met before we can call a distribution a probability distribution. Two requirements. The first requirement is that the sum of all the probabilities in a sample space must equal one. See? The sum of all the probabilities in a sample space must equal one. If it's not, if it's bigger than one, that means it is not a probability distribution. So let me show you how this works. So the sum of all the probabilities in the sample space, if you add all this, now for example, look at the three examples we did of, before. Uh, this one has 0 0.5, 0 0.33, 0 0.17. So, so 0 0.5 plus 0 0.33 plus 0 0.17. Let's go and add them, see if it meets this requirement. Uh, we have it in this form. Okay, 0.5. Plus uh, point three zero plus point one five. Okay. Oh, this is not three zero, which is three. Uh, let me hold on, make sure I copy this right. It is point three three, and I wrote three. Yes, yeah, this is three three right here. So I wrote three zero by mistake. So it's point three. So three three not three zero okay. So I'm gonna three three. See, uh, point five, point one, I wrote point one five. It's Why did all the mistakes today? Okay, let's see. It's point one seven, and I wrote point one five. So it's point one seven. And seven, you was see you was one, so, so 0 0.5, 0 0.33 plus 0 0.17 was one. So that's the first one. So you can see that this one is us oh, is a uh, a probability distribution 1.0. How about the other ones we did the previous one? Look at this. Uh, we have three over eight, right? So the sum, uh, sum will now become. Adding, say adding some of it, or total, I can call it total, if you like. That should be total right here. So that'll be equals, um, first one is one over eight, one over eight, eight. You know what, let me just write them out and then so I will do it. With this move, so you can see it for eight plus three over eight plus three over eight plus three over eight. So you can save time. Hope I wrote them right down correctly this time. Okay. All right, let's see. Taking you to this most, we have um clear this. Okay, I have uh, make sure you're seeing this. Yep. All right. So you got um, one over eight plus one over eight. Oh, one over eight, two over eight, two over eight. Okay. Uh, plus three over eight. And then plus 
one by eight. See, it's one. So it also meets the first requirement, 1.0. See, or I can call it uh, eight by eight, which give us one. See, okay. And if you go to the, the first, one, very first one we did is the same thing. If you add all this at the total right here, uh, total, you have one by six from, from your algebra class. You know that if they have the same denominator, you just add the numerators. One, two, six, we give us six over six, which is one. Okay. So now that's the first requirement that emits uh that it emits that it's small or if it's bigger than one or less than one, it's not. The second requirement is this: the probability of each event in the sample space must be between or equal to two and one. Which means that probability can never be, be negative, can never be a negative number or greater than one. Now, based on this requirement, let us answer this question here. Okay. It says here, determine whether each distribution is a um, probability distribution. Let's start with the first one. Is it a is it is it a um, a distribution? Six. The sum of it total will be it equals one over five plus one over five plus one over five plus how yeah, I many of them? This one is one over five, one over five, one over five, and one one over five plus one over five. When you are algebra class, you know that if they all have the same denominator, you add the just the denominators. So I mean, it's five over five, one plus one plus one plus one plus. So it's five for five. So the answer is one. So the answer is yes, it is. Yeah. And the B part says, is this a distribution? Answer is no because you can see this. This one you can see very clearly. Remember the first requirement says, sorry, the second requirement says the probability of each event in the sample space must be between or equal to zero and one, which means that it can never be negative or greater than one. We look at this. See that this outcome is great, is negative, and this one is greater than one. So the answer is no. It is not. No, um, it is not a probability distribution because one of the probabilities. Is um, have a negative value another one another one is greater than than one. Let's see this one is negative this one is greater than one. So Look at part um, C, which asked this B, this is C right here. C asks if this is a, a distribution. Now, solution. Now, all this does, does not have the same denominator. So we just add them. Um, this total or sum of this. It be first one is one over four plus second one is one over eight 
plus, the other one is one over 16. And the fourth one is uh, nine over 16. Equals, let's see, I wanna write them down so that we can add them. We're almost done. Uh, one over four plus one over eight plus one over 16 plus nine over 16. So if you add them, you're done, then they are done. So this give us some, um, we got clear. One over four. Okay, plus one over, 50, one over eight. Plus one over 16. Okay, plus. Nine over sixteen is one. One. So one is that's, that's one. So it is. And the answer is yes. Anyway, that is it. So when we come back on um Friday. We we now we finish this uh, topic of probability distribution by doing the, the mean variance and standard deviation of a probability distribution, so that by next week we can begin binomial distributions. Is there any question before we leave? No questions. Come on, please no. let me let me take by you and um attendance, and then we can go. Oh, yeah. Just one minute. That is okay. One minute. Tracking from here. Like right somewhere. Yep. All right. So I got here. Aaron is here. Okay, Ania is here. Bennett. Chambers. Nicholson. Okay, who else? Them. Well, I see you on Friday then. You have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good one. You too.